Everyone says, buy low, sell high. But how do you know when a stock is low and when it's high? Is $5 low or is $100 high? There's no one-size-fits-all answer, but there are very powerful tools to help you figure it out. One of the most popular tools is the P.E. ratio. In this video, we're going to break down what it is, exactly how it can help you, and what limitations it has by using examples. When you Google a stock price, some basic information pops up like the stock's opening price, market capitalization, and dividend yield. You'll also notice something called the P.E. ratio in the mix. We'll explain it with examples later, but first, what is it and why should you care? The P.E. ratio is a type of multiple that compares the company's stock price with its earnings per share. The higher this number is, the more expensive it is. It's similar to the price per pound ratio we use while comparing different types of meat at the butcher shop to find the cheapest option. By placing the price of the stock against the earnings per share of the stock, you can compare how much people are willing to pay for a share to make a more informed decision. While the P.E. ratio is one of the most popular multiples, there are so many different multiples that investors can use to evaluate stocks. To determine the P.E. ratio, you must divide the stock price by the earnings per share. The earnings per share is simply a ratio between the net profit made by a company and the total shares outstanding. Companies that expand quicker, like tech companies, usually have a higher P.E. Let's take NVIDIA, for example. It had a stock price of $61.52 as of January 31, 2024, and an EPS of $1.71. So by dividing the stock price with the EPS, we get a P.E. ratio of 51.57. So what does this mean? This means that investors are willing to pay $51.51 for every dollar of earnings that NVIDIA makes. This helps you gauge how the market values a particular company's earnings relative to its stock price. Well, it only becomes useful if you add context, so let's add some. Let's go back to that butcher shop. A piece of beef from company A costing $8 per pound alone doesn't mean anything significant. However, if we know the industry group average of beef is $6 per pound, it adds more context and helps us see the bigger picture. If you know that beef from other brands is selling for an average of $6 per pound, you get a better sense of whether that $8 per pound price tag is justified. However, maybe the beef is priced more because of superior quality. Similarly, when analyzing stocks, you should compare the P.E. ratio of a company to its industry group. The S&P 500 P.E. ratio is around 27. However, the estimated P.E. ratio for the S&P 500 information technology sector is 40.68. This clearly illustrates how highly valued NVIDIA is in the current market. You can interpret this in two ways. The company is overvalued, or the market expects it to continue growing. NVIDIA is heavily reliant on AI, which has seen a huge rise in popularity and is the primary factor behind the company's growth. Adding further context makes it easier to make more informed decisions about whether the company is overpriced or not. Hey, if you're finding value from the video, please click the like button because it helps. A low P.E. ratio could mean a stock is undervalued in the current market due to a terrible decision taken by executives, for example. It's important to remember that a company may also have a negative P.E. ratio which can come from negative earnings. You should never rely only on the P.E. ratio to make the decision for you. If you would like to learn about other metrics you can use to analyze a stock like Warren Buffett, check out this video. A P.E. ratio isn't the best way to estimate the future growth potential of a company, even if you calculate it using a forward earnings estimate. So investors use another multiplier called the price earnings to growth or P.E.G. ratio to address this. It gives you a different view of a stock by incorporating the company's expected earnings growth rate for a specified time period. Let me give you an example to better illustrate how the P.E.G. ratio differs from the P.E. ratio. Let's compare two companies, A and B. Company A, current P.E. ratio, 60 times earnings. Five-year projected growth rate, 40%. P.E.G. ratio, 60 over 40, equals 1.50. Company B, current P.E. ratio, 20 times earnings. Five-year projected growth rate, 15%. P.E.G. ratio, 20 over 15, equals 1.33. At first glance, if you judge them on just the P.E. ratio, Company A looks overvalued as the P.E. is 60, which is triple Company B. But if we bring the growth rate into the picture, we can see a different picture because company A has a far higher growth rate. While its P.E.G. ratio of 1.5 is still higher than company B's 1.33, it doesn't look as overvalued as it was when we used just the P.E. ratio. 
By using the PEG ratio, you can get a more balanced view, allowing you to make better comparisons across companies and industries. While the PEG ratio can enhance the PE ratio by adding growth forecasts, having reliable and accurate forecasts is key. Having a poor source of growth forecasts can make the PEG ratio a less valuable metric than the PE ratio. The PE ratio is one of the most widely used stock analysis tools because of its simplicity, but this simplicity leads to limitations. The market price of a company is the easy part, but understanding how to define company earnings and analyzing other factors that impact earnings is challenging. Here are further limitations and challenges with the P.E. ratio. It doesn't consider growth. Since the P.E. ratio only looks at current earnings and the current price, it doesn't account for growth potential. A high P.E. can sometimes be justified with a high growth rate, which is where the P.E.G. ratio can help as we saw earlier. Accounting Manipulation since the P.E. ratio depends on earnings, companies can manipulate it through accounting practices. Companies can delay expenses or accelerate revenue recognition to make the earnings appear better. Industry variants. Some industries, like the tech industry, have higher P.E. ratios than other, safer industry companies. So using it across different industries can lead to unfair conclusions. The other factors, such as short-term market sentiment, industry regulations, dividends, or economic conditions, can also impact a company. The P.E. ratio is a useful tool for evaluating stocks. However, it should never be used in isolation. Investors should understand how to define company earnings and analyze other factors which impact earnings. Check out this video for tips on calculating the value of a stock. Also, please consider subscribing and clicking that like button because it helps. Cheers!